In today's video, we're gonna be doing the Golden Throne hike in Capitol Reef. I'm gonna teach you what you need to know about it before you go. Thanks for joining us on another journey. Today, we're in Utah at Capitol Reef National Park. If you're new to the channel, that's April. And I'm Wayne. Hit that subscribe button and smash that bell. We do a video every Thursday from somewhere. So sit back, relax, and enjoy, enjoy the, the journey. journey. There's a big hole right here. Yeah, I see it. So one of the things that I really like about Capitol Reef is the fact that a lot of it's undeveloped. Now, we just brought my little Kia today. You really need a four-wheel drive truck to see the big, grander things on the outskirts where most people don't get to go to. But there's still a lot of roads that you can go down with just a regular car. Right out the gate, you just start going straight up. Lots of stairs. This is why you need hiking boots. The terrain is very rocky, uneven, sandy, slick rock. Makes a big difference. You can buy cheap boots, you can buy expensive boots. They all kind of work the same, but don't buy tennis shoes. Are you guys planning a trip of the Mighty Five in Utah? I'm gonna give you some advice. Do not try to do all five in one week. These parks are massive. You can spend a month at each park easily and not see it all. Pick one park, do that park, come and do it again at a different time of the year and go to a different park. We do know that a lot of you have limited time and try to maximize your limited time out this way. Just do the best you can. If you have the opportunity to limit it to one park, like Wayne said, and then come back again later the same year or the next year to another park, that's the optimal way right. to go one one maybe, day for each park is not enough yeah maybe try to narrow it down to just two or if you have to three out of the mighty five this view does crazy things to someone with vertigo issues <laughs> So you think the tree's dead, but it's really not. We read in uh, Bryce Canyon that some of these trees are 1,600 years old. Even though they look dead, they're still alive. See the little branch of green? It's coming from this dead tree. Check them out. That's awesome. Saw some rams or goats. We're not really sure what they were. If you know, comment below. One of the reasons we picked the Golden Throne to do today is because it's a lesser traveled trail. You get more of the environment to yourself, hardly any people on the trail. And obviously we just saw some animals, so that made it all worth it. I'm always preaching about water, but a good trick that we do when we go on a little bit longer hike in the desert is we usually have two camel bag and one because we have so much camera gear, we wanna switch off April carry the bag for a little bit and then I'll carry it. So we have a three liter bag and a two liter bag. Who out there wants to donate some hats to go travel on the cheap? <laughs> we keep forgetting to buy them. Capel Reefs trails are mostly very sunny. And while Wayne and I aren't big fans of wearing hats, we would both wear just about anything, at least a breathable hat at this point. Because my little bald spot <sighs> is burning. Your little bald spot? Okay, it's a big bald spot. When you're hiking in Capitol Reef, you wanna make sure and hike with a map, whether you've got it downloaded to your phone or you have the old school paper map. If you're not aware of all trails, it's a free app that you can put on your phone. You can also get the paid version, but uh, it will help you out with. Trails in Capitol Reef, in keeping with the theme of being more rugged, left more untouched, they can get confusing here and there, especially on Cassidy Arch. We know of a few people that have hiked a mile or so in the wrong direction. <laughs> that happens. Take a hard left when you get to the fork at Cassidy Arch. <laughs> Even if you think you wanna get a tan, like my kids always tell me, you still need to put a layer of protection on because- You're at high elevation. Yes, and 
It's well, a different sun too. That's the golden throne. Awesome. The big giant one? Yeah, the big giant golden one. Yeah, that's cool. We're gonna climb it. Oh no. <laughs> we can barely walk this. How the hell are we gonna climb it? If you're coming to Utah, you want to experience a really cool slot canyon. It's called Leprechaun Canyon. It's about 45 minute drive from Capitol Reef out towards Lake Powell, cart above. It's amazing. But what's cool about it too is you can, you're pretty close to Lake Powell, so you can stop in at Lake Powell and check that out. I've always wanted to go to Lake Powell and do the houseboat thing. I just haven't done it yet. Ever so thankful for just a little sliver of shade. Bring lots of lotion with you because you're gonna dry out immediately. And that's why you have to have so much water as well. For the nose? Oh. I mean, maybe most people don't feel what I feel, but in extreme dry, it gets all irritated and then I usually end up having at least a bloody nose or two. Right. If you're coming to any of the higher parks like Bryce Canyon or Capitol Reef, we also suggest a aspirin every morning with lots of water to help with altitude sickness. The trail gets a little fuzzy, blends in, camouflages in. They'll have rocks, with dead tree branches, or even cairns to mark the path for you. It's really important to stay to pay attention to these because you can get lost really quick out here. We have officially made it to the end of the trail. Let's see what we got. Magnificent. So April was right. It was the larger rock formation. This hike is all about the journey, not the end. The skies out here are just amazing. Like you'll never see skies like this anywhere else. When are you guys planning your trip to Utah to see one of the Mighty Five? Comment below and tell us which one you're going to see. We have two miles back now. This is typically how it goes on our way back. We're usually whooped, heads down, focused. Get back to the car. We're in endurance mode. To give you an idea, we drank two liters of water already. We're on our third liter, two miles out and heading back. So it'll be a total of four mile round trip. I don't know about y'all, but one of the strange things that I like about hiking is full gamut of emotions that I run through. They've actually done studies on it for people that have anxiety. You can actually get off your medicine if you hike a lot. But that's not to say you don't have a lot of anxiety on some trails. <laughs> Ankle does have some anxiety. Oh my effing hell. <laughs> I got the card above to Beehive, that was in Maine in Acadia National Park. Or the fact that I couldn't even do precipice, even though I tried, kind of. That's a hard hike. Which I am proud to say I've done. Scooting and crawling and crying, but I did it. You got the t-shirt. Card above for that old video. So this is an example of when it gets hard to see the trail, you can see the cairns, that's what we're following. It's the only reason we even know we have a trail. Check out this rock. Looks like it's just gonna go over the edge any minute. April, go push it. <laughs> Let's see if April's strong enough. Nope. Oh jeez. You almost moved it? Yeah. For real? For real. I felt a little, a little microscopic move. Man, she's like He-Man. In the power of Grayskull. <laughs> and we're walking down this trail all the way across that rim. That's the flat area, which is not much. And then down to the bargain. Have you guys ever heard of rock hounding? We made this really cool video in a cave and went mining for crystals. Check out the card above for the rock hounding episode if you want to learn more about some rocks in Utah. Sight for sore eyes. Look at that. It's the parking lot. So we're almost at the end and I bet you I have 
a quarter of my hydration bag, which is the last one of five liters between the two of us. to give you an idea how much water you need to bring. Now granted, we're middle-aged people that are out of shape, but we do hike a lot. Could you survive in this isolated location? Do you know how to manage a farm or a ranch? Warren pioneers survived with self-reliance. They built gravity-fed irrigation systems. They used horse-drawn equipment to plow fields and maintain roads. The first tractor didn't arrive in Fruta until 1940. Pioneers grew and raised nearly all of their own food from produce to livestock. Work days were long and hard. They canned and dried fruits and vegetables, which sustained them through the winter. They used cellars without artificial refrigeration since there was no electricity in Fruta till 1948. Smoke rose from smokehouses used to preserve meats. Most of their clothing, housewares, toys, etc. were made by hand. It's really important in Capitol Reef to pay attention to flash flood conditions. If there's any threats of storms in the area, it can become dangerous really, really fast. So be smart and remember it's your responsibility to know the current and predicted conditions. Travel tip for you. If you come to the national parks, especially Capitol Reef, you want something to eat for lunch, you better bring it in a cooler. Because <laughs> there's not a whole lot here. Saves you money too. Yep. Plus food tastes so much better in the park. Especially after five miles or four miles of hiking. There's nothing close by. So, I mean, the closest town is Torrey, and Torrey's at least, what, 15 miles or so. That's actually another travel tip for you. If you guys fly into Salt Lake City or you fly into Las Vegas, we definitely suggest while you're there, go to the bigger grocery stores, get your cooler, get your food, get your, anything that you need. A lot of these smaller towns have very small grocery stores, like literally the size of a convenience store. So they're limited to what they have. And, and plan on eating out in some of these small towns. They've got great food. Well, that bread's about 400 degrees. Just came out of the oven. <laughs> <laughs> we want to thank you guys for watching our video all the way to the end. If you would, hit that subscribe button, share it with a friend, and like always, thank you for living live.